welcome to this modding tutorial for Battle Trauma. Timestamps have been added for your convenience. Next up, particles. How do they work? It's very simple. Like creatures, they have an editor. Unlike the creatures, it is hidden and not really complete. To access it, be in the menu, open the console, that's F3, and type particle editor. If you've seen my creature tutorial, then this will look somewhat similar. But you must note that there is not a create new or any way to set a new particle. In that note, you can also not edit any of the base game particles in any way, at least in this editor. But there are buttons to copy an emi em em emitter and copy particle. This will be handy for later. For now, let's explain what is emitter and particle. A meter is similar to an entity, whose job is to spawn the particle related to it, while prefab is the particle itself. You cannot spawn a particle without an emitter, but they are set in separate XMLs. Don't worry, I'll give you an example of this when we get there. All particles can have a small amount of randomization, if you set the parameters right. Most of them have a description, except for angular velocity, which, if you need to know, dictates with what speed the particle will rotate. Positive is counterclockwise and negative is clockwise. From here on, everything has a description, so for the sake of time, have a read if you are interested on it. At the end of the day, it's not complicated, and if you've been following the series, you're standing on good ground to understand it. For now, let's click on Copy Prefab. Let's head over to creating our own. First, let me explain the sprite sheet of it. Unlike any other sprite sheet, this one must be tight. In other words, if your sprite is 50 pixels wide and tall, then the next sprite in succession must start at pixel 51 and having the same width and length. You can circumvent this by adding a dead border around your sprite, that is, giving it a border without anything on it. Note that not all particles need to have multiple states. You can do one that has only one sprite, and with the randomization parameters, it will look different every time it is spawned. Now, if you want to create a particle, create an XML, and call it anything you want. Do keep in mind that it will be considered a prefab in the game, so having it just that in the name helps with organizing a bit. Start by opening a main block called prefabs and then add another block with whatever the name you want for your particle. Its properties are the ones we saw in the editor, so it's best if we edit them later on it. If you can't remember anything that is supposed to be here, worry not. Remember the buttons on the editor? You can use one of the particles on the base game as your own, well, base, and save the hassle of typing all of these properties. From the previous step that I told you to click on Copy Prefab, now you paste it right below the main block, and change the name of it. For Particle Prefabs, this is also the ID, so not changing it will give you an error of duplication. From now, all that is left is to explain how to color sprite. There are two types of particles, the static particle and the animated particle. Static is exactly the same as any other sprite seen in this tutorial so far. The only difference is that the particles allow multiple sprite blocks like this. If this happens, then the game will select one at random. For animated particles, however, they require something similar to an animation sheet, something like this. Every frame must be drawn. As for how it works, it's actually not complicated at all. The coordinates up to the half of it are the same as any other, but the last two numbers are the size of the entire sheet, not just the one of the travels. The actual size of each individual frame will be decided by dividing the size of the image into the rows and columns. I don't know why it was made this way, so let's just accept it and move on. Once you have set these paths and coordinates, you'll be ready to add the XML to your file list under the name of Particles. Once all of that is done, you may now change every property on it on the editor. This way you know exactly how it will look in-game. But what about the emitter? E emitter? E me. Let's head over to Gun XML for this example. A particle emitter is created whenever you want a particle to appear during an action. 
In this case, we want a flash muzzle to appear when the gun is fired, which is why it's inside ranged weapons. While you can preview your particle emitter in the editor, you don't actually create one here. You must set these parameters inside whatever item you wanted to use. Luckily, you can set the emitter in the editor, copy it with this button, and finally paste it on the item, saving you a lot of time and trial and error runs. And that covers up particles. Quite a short video. Next on the list is locations, biomes, and missions. I'll see you there. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing for similar content. Have a fantastic day.